What's up, guys? I'm back with another video for you today. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. I literally just got dressed like I'm filming this before I leave. Um, I know what you're saying. Why am I reviewing The Bachelorette this year? Um, well, since, you know, C19's basically taken out a lot of content for a lot of us on um, this platform, we got to resort to different means. And, you know, I'm a viewer of The Bachelor Bachelorette. I've been watching since Ben Higgins' season. So, yeah, I've been tuning in. You know, I sometimes only just watch reviews because the season's be boring at the beginning and it nearly gets to, like, the drama drama to later. But since your girl needs content, I definitely want to go ahead and review this, especially since we get a switch up, you know, possibly halfway. So, yeah, I took some notes, and it wasn't really a lot for the first episode, as expected. We know that the next, like, two or three are going to be a lot, especially with what we've heard about clearly the Intasia coming in and just everything going on. And based off the promos that they released during last night's episode, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> this is going to be a lot. And, it, you know, I know this might be some new Bachelor, Bachelorette people watching me. First of all, um, hi, nice to meet you. Name Simone. Um, second of all, I'm not that up to date with everything Bachelor Nation, so please show me mercy. And three, um, considering, you know, Bachelor Nation in the past, any kind of racist comments or threats that y'all might name make in my comment section or might send me for my messages, I will block you. I will report you. Just a heads up because apparently y'all thing with black people reviewing this show, y'all don't like what they say. So let's just put that out there. How to do some housekeeping before we start. Anyway, so we get the opening promo of what we got from the commercials. Dale is emphasized so much. Like it feels like like you they know that we know already. They know that we know. We obviously didn't have to tell us this. But the fact that y'all are kind of basically spoiling it for us, it's just like, we know it's Dale. You're just putting it in front of our faces. We aren't that dumb. And the new clips we're getting is Claire quitting, the guys reacting. You know, we even get to see one of them, like, is there going to be another Bachelorette or are we just going home? So we get some stuff pre-quarantine. You know, we go back to February. Claire gets the call from Chris Harrison. Is like, a, oh my God. Like, are y'all trying... We can tell they're trying to reenact when... They gave her the call because it's like, how's the camera conveniently in your house? And then we get the whole press run of her doing interviews and doing her photo shoot. You know, thankfully they got to do promo stuff before quarantine happened. We get to see Salt of Her at the beach and then we cut to an ambulance chaser and COVID hitting California. And we get the recap of Claire from one Paula season in Bachelor in Paradise. They kind of left off her stuff on Winter Games, which some people say that was when she was a mess. So I'm guessing they want to make a positive picture. Anyway, um, April, California was in shelter in place. Claire's visiting her mom who has Alzheimer's. And I really um, like that they put a human aspect to it. Like, you know, people think people come on the show just to get, you know, clout social media. A lot of them are trying to find love. And I understand her wanting to have her mom basically see her getting married because the thing is with people with Alzheimer's, they remember days on and off of who they are, who are the people in their life. So yeah, that was showing a true side of what this pandemic is doing to people. She can't see her mom because she's at risk. So then cut to June, production's back on, they're moving everything from Anaheim to Palm Springs. Now, I've been to plenty of La Quinta's. La Quinta Palm Springs, that ain't lone La Quinta. That's a resort. <laughs> That's a straight resort. Just like the Madison Resort. We then have the men in quarantine, them getting tested. You know, this is back when they were still using like the long swabs where everyone felt like they were touching their brain. I used the short one when I did the self um, swabbing at CVS. We can get some clips of some contenders. We see Easy, who was my favorite. We see Kenny. We see Blake. We see Yusef, who I'm already dubbing as the Luke P of the season. I do not trust him. 
And I think some of us kind of catch it in the trailer that he's the one kind of going off on Claire, calling her the oldest bachelorette. I don't like him. I don't like him. So we have Claire and Chris do a sit down. We see that, you know, she talks about how the beginning of her journey with The Bachelor, she had come out of a abusive relationship and how her dad passed away and that he made a video for her and her future husband, you know, before he passed and how, you know, she wants the love that her parents had and she wants to be able to have her, at least her mom see her get married. It's just like, you want to make sure they have that time, but also you want to find that kind of love. And then we cut to the meeting of the guy. So I'm not going to go over every single person. I'm just going to go about the ones that made it to like round two, week two, actually. So we have Ben, the army ranger. She, he teaches, you know, Claire how to do like deep breaths because, you know, she, they're both nervous. Then we had Riley, the attorney. Um, he had the one with the good pickup line. He was a lawyer with the good pickup line. Just a side note, I couldn't help but think of which ones would be good contenders for Tasha when she gets there. I marked them on my list. Then we had Jack C, the addiction specialist. We had Jordan M, who's the cybersecurity manager, calls himself a tall drink of water. But, um, sir, you couldn't get longer pants from that suit. I understand suits are different, but sir, we could have got some longer pants. You could see them. I'm not trying to say his ankles were ashy, but like you could tell. You can tell. We can tell when you ask me, brother. Um, then we had Jason, the former line man, did the tribute to when Claire was on one policy and she came out with a baby bump. I remember that from the trailer back in the day. He did that with Claire. Then we have Ivan, the aero needle engineer, and it shows that he is bilingual. So I'm like, okay, all right. You'll be good for Tasha. Okay. <laughs> Then we had Kenny, the boy band manager. Now, boy band manager, are we talking about like moderately kind of mainstream, like a why don't we? Or like garage band performs at the school dances and the neighborhood festivals type of boy band manager. But yeah, he had a dog shirt. He had a shirt of Claire's dogs. So that was a cute one. Brandon the roofer. Didn't really feel anything. Nothing. Then we had Blake, who was the male grooming specialist. This was y'all's fancy way for saying he's a barber. It's a fancy way of saying he's a barber. My goodness. Then we had Bennett's. Um, well, actually, no. Let me just mention this. Tyler, the lawyer. He pulls up in the station wagon. And shall... <laughs> living up to the reputation of Tyler's seat. We're going to talk about him later. Then we had Bennett. The wealth management consultant that pulled up in the Rolls Royce, looking all James Bond, whatever, all the bougie and whatnot. So he made it through. I'm guessing he's going to be a possibility of staying long term because usually the trick is with the show. They give us the clips of the season in the trailer. That's most likely the contenders of the season that'll make it very far. I don't know if we're gonna get a different trailer for Tasha. Probably. So, yeah. Then we have Blake, the wildlife manager. Um, I think that's the what They're two Blakes. I'm going to confuse them. Both of them made it, but I know one of them basically talked to Hannah. All right. So then we're going to cut to Joe, the anesthesiologist. You know, have to pick a one. I'm here to save your life and all that. Then we have Garen, the journalism professor. You know, journalism professor. Ain't nothing wrong with smart guy. Then we got Easy, my favorite. He comes through a sign saying, your future husband. I'm like, there you go. There you go. Former football player. He's a currently a sports management director, so, sports marketing director. So his energy is great. Then we have Jay, the fitness director that shows up in a stray jacket. Now, I don't know if y'all telling us that he's going to be the... If he's going to be like the one that goes too far, the one that kind of is like the all goodness one. But um, someone pointed out in one of the reviews that it's Mental Health Awareness Month and they had a guy coming out in a strange jacket. This one, I ain't trying to be PC, but you know, someone mentioned it and I was like, dang, ABC. Okay, we have Chase, the IT account specialist. He shows up in a whole 
night suits. I'm just like, bro, you could have just come up in a horse. That would have been extra if you came in in a horse too. <laughs> oh, that would have been so great. Then we have Damar, the spin cycle instructor that comes out in full parachute gear. I'm like, okay, all right. I see you. I see you go far. Okay. Um, also, another thing. Y'all, Unreal, the TV show off of Lifetime, it spoiled a bunch of stuff that The Bachelor, be uh, how they operate behind the scenes. Y'all know that all the guys are in the same limo. You're like, you don't get 31 limos. You can't rent that. ABC ain't got that money. So basically, they're all in the same limo. They all exit out at different times to basically meet Claire. Some of them will bring their own rides. So they just want to the first introduction to be kind of like the funny moment to get, you know stand out in Claire's attention. So then we have Ed, the healthcare salesman comes in an actual bubble. <laughs> we got Yusuf, the salesman that brings um, the cookies. You know, this is the guy that was talking about his daughter. And I feel like he's going to be using the daughter as an excuse. I'm sorry. I really, he seems like a manipulator. I really think that. We have Jordan C, the software exec. Zach J, the cleaning salesman that had the whoopee cushion in a ring box. I'm like, are you going to propose right now? But he had the whoopee cushion in a, in a fart box. So he's a jokester. We had Brandon, the real estate agent. And then here comes Dale. Dale, the former pro footballer. Child, Claire was enamored. Love at first sight. Even so, she said, I think I just met my future husband. I'm like, girl, really? Really? Are you sure that was love and not lust? Because it seems to confuse the two. It, it, it caught everybody off guard that Chris had to come in and be like, you're the first person to ever say that on the show. And so, I don't know. It seems like they're kind of setting it up for her to be da the pig Dale. Because it's just like, because the fear going around is that she got fired because they want to bring a black woman in on the show. And they were like, look, we probably aren't going to have the same views, but we're going to basically be like, hey, you're going to stay here for a couple of episodes. You're still going to get paid. You're going to pick out this person. Y'all going to leave early. We'll bring in Tasha. That's the theory going around. I don't believe it, but I can't believe Claire is falling hard for this guy after less than a day of knowing him. Then we have Tyler S., the music manager. So the first talks, um, I forgot who the first guy was. But then we had her talking with um, Easy. Basically, they're talking about family. They share um, basically how he's a mama's boy and how he called him every day to ask if he met a girl, if he's going to church, if he met a girl at the church. I'm like, if neither of these girls pick you, can I holler at you for a minute? I mean, for your age difference, it ain't bad. So we then have Dale... And him and Hannah, not Hannah, why did I say Hannah, damn it. <laughs> I'm still caught up from last season's um, season. But we have him and Claire talking about, you know, how the pandemic's really changed a lot and how her mom is in the hospital with Alzheimer's and talks about how his sister has a, um, not terminal condition, but she does have a medical condition that, you know, basically keeps him from seeing her. So they relate on that. And he ends up getting the first impression rose. And I'm kind of like, eh, because it's like, she talks with Blake and kind of calls him out about him contacting her during the quarantine because she heard that her mom was in the hospital after she fell and broke her nose. And so they have a moment. She appreciated that he contacted her because he was the only guy to contact her at that time. So... They ended up having the first kiss on the show, and we thought he was going to get the first impression rose, but uh, nah, it went to Dale. Um, we then have Claire talking with Yusuf, and Tyler C. was some of the guys know that basically he knows some stuff about um, Yusuf, that he was messaging and DMing other girls during the break. Now, people were like, hold up, was he single during this time? Was he committed to the show? If... The show was on a definite hiatus, and they didn't know what they're coming back, then he has, he's okay with doing DMs. But if you knew the exact time, you all would probably go back, and you were DMing in girls while you waited, while you were in quarantine in Palm Springs, while you were 
on your way here. That's messed up. Um, this caused total friction. Yusuf was like, okay, I need to clear my name. She's like, can I talk to you? She interrupts him, her talking with, um, I think it was Riley the lawyer. Was it Riley the lawyer? Yeah, he, he interrupted her talking with Riley the lawyer. And basically, Claire's got the two of them sitting down to figure out what the heck's going on. The guys are pissed off because that cuts into their time to talk with Claire. Like, it's night one and they got to deal with drama already. Because night one, basically, if she don't know you like that after maybe an hour or so, and I think they had the whole night because it was literally morning by the time they got to the first rose ceremony, then you're basically gone. And so they were pissed. Even after that whole discussion, they were pissed. Claire was like... Listen, what's going on? Kenny said that he knows people from his hometown that basically said that Yusuf was messaging them. Yusuf's trying to be like, look, I'm not trying to have someone tarnish my name or anything. I'm here for the right reasons. We already know you're not. But Claire basically is like, you know, I'm not here for this drama. I have more men I gotta go see. And then we get to the rose ceremony. So Paige, um, the chef, Robbie, the insurance broker, AJ, the software salesman, and Tyler C. are are all cut. Now, they said like four were eliminated, but from what I could tell, there were different people cut. Because I know she didn't call Mike, or Jeremy, or Chris, AJ, Robbie, or Paige. So that's like six. Did I mark them as like a rose? Oh yeah, Tyler, lawyer, station wagon. Yeah, didn't call him. So Tyler C was kind of cut. I feel like he's gonna have some sort of vindication, especially when it comes to the men tell all, saying like, hey, I told y'all from the jump, Yusuf was not a good guy. And I feel like the next couple of weeks, they're gonna be pointing out Yusuf is not a good guy. And you know, we get a little teaser to Dale might not possibly be what he says he is. And that's going to be something. So it has me, I'm sorry, I'm taking the time. It has me thinking um, two things. Either Dale's going to be an imposter or he's going to be the man of her dreams and they're going to live happily ever after and run off. The promo shows, a bunch of stuff that happens and possibly Tasha makes her entrance. So that's basically what it is. Um, you know, this is kind of like an okay episode to start off with. I know there's going to be more once we get into the show, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I'm sorry to reviews everywhere. And this is my first time reviewing the show. So definitely, I'm going to be reviewing and keep you guys up to date with everything. Definitely going to give it, you know, try. If the views are good, I'll keep reviewing it. So anyway, let me know in the comments how y'all feel about night one. Who is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe uh, to the channel. Hit the like button. Helps great with the algorithm. Follow me on social media. Cash app and Venmo. PayPal. All in there if you want to donate to the channel. The money you do donate does go towards stuff. That's how I was able to get this ring like this year. So anyways, you girl is out. Good love. Have a great day.